We're in a narco syndicalist commune. We take it in turns to act as a sort of executive officer for the week. Yes. But all the decisions of that officer have been ratified at the special bi weekly meeting, you can see, by a civil majority in the case of Jordan and Turner Affairs. Be quiet. But by a two thirds majority in the case of Old Man. I order you to be quiet. Look, you stupid bastard. You've got the arms left. Yes, I have. Look. It's just a fish moon. I don't believe I am. Roundtable Live, Monday through Friday, 1 a.m. till 4 a.m. Eastern Time. Bring your mind, bring your ideas, bring your voice. King Arthur had nothing on us. Here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. things were not quite right, that everything was just ever so slightly askew. Do you have, to paraphrase Morpheus, a splinter in your mind? If you're interested in hearing the latest information about UFOs, the paranormal, ancient cultures and structures, monatomic elements, longevity, fantastic discoveries in science, download it to your brain, then tune in to us. Hi, I'm Dave. And I am Mackie. And we are Shiny Side Out, Sundays, 2 to 4 a.m. Eastern. See you then. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Barbara Jean Lindsay is an internationally acclaimed psychic, spiritual healer, author, and founder of the online mystery school, Esoteric University. As the Cosmic Oracle, she is a conduit to the powers that be to answer your questions about your future self, past lives, current career, love. She shines light into the darkness to illuminate what was, what may be, and beyond. The readings and advice given by Barbara Jean Lindsay are for entertainment purposes only. Do not take the place of any medical, legal, or financial advice given to you by a qualified professional and are not a substitute for medical, legal, or financial advice. If you need a doctor, call a doctor. If you need to be expanded, call the Cosmic Oracle. Hey, welcome everyone to the Cosmic Oracle Show. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay. What is today? It's August 7th, 2020, the day after my daughter's 41st birthday. Happy birthday, Melody Faye. We are in Tenino, Washington, coming to you live. I have these amazing guests that got to know over the last couple of weeks, and I'm really happy and honored to share them with you today and their adventure and what they have created, are in the process of creating here at Dragon's Gate Gardens in Tenino, which is... For a long time, I didn't know where I was exactly, but I knew I was in a beautiful place and, and a place with just so much energy and love and healing. And well, and we're gonna talk about dragons, of course, and we're gonna talk about the fairy kingdom and the tree of life. And I mean, you it's just gonna be an amazing evening. I'm glad you're here and that you were able to join us. I wanna thank Revolution Radio for having the Cosmic Oracle show on for the fifth year. And if you're tuning in for the first time, the Revolution Radio is an all volunteer station. And what that means is no one gets paid for any of this. It's all free. I do it because I love doing it. And that gives me the freedom to ask whoever I want, whomever I want on my show uh, to come on and, and uh, give their wisdom to you. And so how we do it is uh, we do it through your donations. And how you can do that is go to freedomslips.com. That's freedomslips.com. And hit that donate button and give whatever you can, $5, $10, and keep us on the air. We need about $2,000 a month to keep all this going. I haven't checked today. I think we're around 1300 Last time I looked, we have a long month ahead of us. So uh, keep on uh, giving to us, and you'll make sh we make sure that every cent is put back into the station. So thank you so much. 
And uh, before I uh, bring our wonderful guest on, um, I do want to bring um, a friend of mine, Rob Potter. Um, but before I bring Rob on just for a second, I do want to say, I think we're going to introduce you guys first. You don't just sit here. I am at Dragon's Gate Gardens, and these are the caretakers of the land. So I think I'm going to introduce you to them first. This is Kathleen uh, Toker Greco, uh, as we know her as Ariel Rose. Uh, she is the Dragon's Gate Psychic Intuitive, and she is the Dragon Crone of the Northwest and Keeper of Dragon Crystals. Uh, today, Ariel is the steward of a 126 and a half acre uh, sanctuary and the librarian of more than 15 tons. Is it 15 tons? That's amazing. Of giant museum quality crystals here on the land. The unique combination of sound healing and working with her crystal grid tables enables Ariel to assist others in reaching a very deep understanding of crystal consciousness and how beneficial that can be to our bodies and souls. This is just a part of her work. You're going to learn more about her and her work and her vision for the world. She is the third of four children whose mother was deeply involved in her church and church music. She learned to sing as she learned to talk. On the altar by six, she was doing solo work by eight, and she lived a life steeped in the love and enjoyment of life's rituals and ceremonies, which she brings here to, Gar to Dragon's Gate. Teen club leader and a Girl Scout gave way to master costumer. You should see the, what I'm looking at right over here, this amazing costume that I know that she's made. And um, she is a master costumer in the International Costumers Guild, celebration artist and ceremonialist. She's a Catholic, a Christian, and a pagan. And she's always researching and learning more. And she studied with a Native American teacher, o Oshina. Oshina. And we're going to hear about that. And uh, she learned crystal grid work from Sir James Hughes, working with Taylor and Roy at Reiki Ranch. She has become a laser Reiki master. And Oriel has performed as the bard for the Druids at Sunrise for Spring Equinox on the Glastonbury Tour, one of my favorite places in the whole planet, as well as singing the Ave Maria in a cathedral dedicated to Mary Magdalene in Southern France. I'm hoping we can get her to sing for us today because she sang a song when I first came here and she put me to tears with the beauty of it. So hopefully she'll sing with us today. Thank you for coming on the show today. Thank Ariel. you for having us. Oh, my pleasure. We'll introduce you to her, her partner. This is Mose Wright. And Mo's great grandmother was the first person to show him magic. And after she passed when he was nine, became his first experience with the presence of a visitor from across the veil. He took a little trip there himself when a fall left a question mark fracture behind his left ear. Do you still have that? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. When he awoke three days later, the day after his 11th birthday, President Kennedy had just been assassinated. He is the youngest of four children and growing up rural, small town, Midwest in the 50s and 60s, lived a pretty normal life for the times other than his fascination with the esoteric. Can you relate, right? I know there's a lot of you that can relate out there. Mose grew up the third generation of a circus family, the grandson of a renowned calliope player, and we're going to find out what that is, and learned fire breathing and sword swallowing from his uncle Charles Chuck Fuller. His interest in the esoteric and spiritual blended well with vaudeville as a form of presentation, aligning his desire to say something meaningful with his ability to rivet an audience's attention. Over 40 years of performing, that's a long time, Mose, over 40 years, included producing shows along the West Coast and entertainment coordinator and board member from 1981 to 1991 at the Oregon Country Fair. I've learned a lot about the Oregon Country Fair since I've been here, Oregon and Washington, coming from LA. I've learned, I had quite a learning experience the last few weeks. Uh, Mose has astonished audiences at home and abroad at festivals and at the New York Magic Symposium in the Grateful Dead's rock video, Going to Hell in a Bucket. I want to see that. The Paul Daniels Magic Show on BBC TV and KCTS Seattle Special, The Stars of New Vaudeville, hosted by the Flying... Karamazov Brothers. Karamazov oh, Brothers. Or, oh. who? <laughs> <laughs> So welcome, Mose, to the show. Thank you. And welcome, welcome the two you. of you. Um, we're going to have my friend Rob Potter come on just for yes. a minute because I'm going to be a speaker. 
at his uh, Mount Shasta uh, retreat coming up May 20, uh, August 26th through the 30th. And it's called Meet the Venusians. And this is Rob's seventh year in putting on this event. So I'm gonna just walk over here and we're gonna get add Rob to the call. And then after Rob, we're gonna hear all about Dragon's Gate Gardens. Okay, come on, Rob. Are you there, Rob? Hey, Rob. Welcome to the show. Unavailable. Well, maybe not. Here we go. We'll try it once more. Sorry for looking at my face. Oh, let's see, Rob Potter, Rob. Potter, P O T T E R, Robert Potter. Okay, let's see. Oh, I only have four of them. Uh, maybe it's this one. Okay, let's just try all of them. Okay, we're going to try these. Are one of those you, Rob? Okay, otherwise I'm going to get you on my phone. Okay. Hmm. Okay, you know what? We're going to try back maybe after the break. So let's see. I just had you, Rob Potter. I don't want to let go. Sometimes you, <laughs> I'm stubborn. So that's helpful in this line of work. Robert. Okay, let's try it again. Robert. Potter. Chatted some, oh, that's the one. That's the one we want is that one. Let's take off of that. Okay, we're adding you and Rob, this is the one. I got a feeling. <laughs> Robert Potter, where are you? Hello. Yes. Hey. Hi, Rob. <laughs> well, you said you wanted to see me. I, I well. do. It's good to see you, my friends. <laughs> Welcome to the show. How's it going with your conference coming up? And and last time we didn't get a chance to talk about Omnek Onek, so I was hoping you'd be able to do that with our group today for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'll be happy to do that. The conference, we're in a series of, um, you know, there's a, the escalation of the situation. Um, I understand they're going to be requiring checkpoints and papers to move around New York. This is the Nazi, I mean, I don't see how this can can go out. This will bring about, uh, you know, mayhem in the streets. And then the um, the next card in the Illuminati card deck is to start sniping people. And uh, people will start dropping dead from anonymous bullets, which are really a false flag. And this will... Um, I don't know, you know, I, I, these questions, I'm asking some hard questions of the Venusians here. Right. <laughs> Coming up. Uh, are there plans by the White House to disable the Kazarian Moffat control media and expose the lies propaganda machine? Uh, real viable or in limbo? Is JFK alive? Will it be Trump's running mate or is it total fabrication? If Trump is working with the good guys, won't he arrest the criminal? Why won't he arrest the criminals like Gates, Fauci, Soros, Cheney, Rumsfeld, Obama, and the Bushes, and the countless other evildoers and positions of power? I, I'm, I'm hitting them hard. I don't know what they're going to answer, but um, I'm hoping for spiritual gnosis. And, um, you know, I, I may have to keep some of these private. Okay. You know, okay. But well, we're here but we'll today see. To we'll see. I've got a lot of good public spiritual questions too. Yeah, we're here just uh, for you to tell us about Omnek Onek and about your conference coming up. We only have a few minutes. Um, uh, I also have on the show today we have uh, Ariel and Mose who also have event. Uh, they do the Tree of Life event each year. Oh, good. Oh, are we online? Are we on air now? Yes, we are, my friend. 
So Excuse me. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have our private conversation later, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought this well. Welcome. So anyway, I hope, I hope the crew there is all doing good it's at, all uh, good. at Revolution Radio. It is. It's we're cool. We're good. Very so, good. so your conference is August twenty sixth through the thirtieth in Mount Shasta. Yes, um, we are. Um, it's a very large venue. Um, it's you know, uh, it actually seats. You know, officially can be like four or five hundred people. So, uh, social distancing will be possible, and uh, we are asking people to bring masks because of the, the situation and. Um, you know, I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna play it by ear and see how things go. But we do have uh, a fair amount of people uh, signing up. We have some wonderful speakers. Barbara's gonna be there. The Crystal Skull, Bill Holman, and many others. And um, for those who are feeling a, a calling, you know, and a drawing to uh, move forward here and step into fear and to look for truth and to find people of like mind who are uh, seeking uh, the spiritual answers with this pandemonium, we're going to have a lot of interesting, um, positive information. We're not going to be focused on this destruction agenda. I can say that from my contacts with the Venusians, I can pretty much assure that this too shall pass. We may see varied levels of success in these depopulation microchipping programs, but in the end, this can't stand. This cannot, you know, the, we've come here to avert a crisis of humanity, the Galactic Confederation, the angels forever attend us, the mission of Christ, the avatars, um, the starseeds, and the good people of Earth will, will overcome this problem. And we have to find a way to, to be intelligent. The misdirected youth uh, violently in the streets will will eventually understand the truth. And I hope that this can happen sooner than later, but there's a tremendous amount of energy right now on the planet with a lot of our astrological implications changing people's vibrations. So in Mount Shasta, we're gonna have a safe and healthy uh, little gathering. It's, it's not real big at this point for sure, but I'm determined to have it take place. And we're gonna have a great sky watch and some wonderful wonderful uh, nature around for you to take off in between the, the long breaks and stuff. So um, it's going to be really fun for how sure. How can they reach you, Rob? What's the best? If they're interested, where would they go to to find out about your conference? Um, well, um, I have a public Facebook page called the Robert Potter page. I also have a, a Mount Shasta Summer Conference uh, page uh, where these uh, – the conference link is posted to the top, and of course, my website, thepromiserevealed.com. I was actually hoping it would be on today, but we're doing a few glitches on a brand new look for the website, so oh, that's going to be up pretty soon. A brand new website. It's not going to be as busy in the beginning as this as my other website, but on the front page, there's a slider banner. You can click on that. That'll take them to tickets. And um, I'd like to announce now for those of you who go there, my email and phone number is there. We do have, I do have a sponsor who's uh, kindly and generously offered uh, for me to sponsor some very discounted tickets. Right now for five days is three seventy nine. I'm probably going to lower that a bit, uh, oh, a little bit. But um, for those of you who reach out to me. Through my email address, Rob at the Promise Revealed, um, you can send an email, and the sponsor wanted to review the questions, and he'll have me call, um, and we'll offer some very discounted uh, positions to those who are financially challenged, and all that stuff. So, okay. anyway, that's enough of that. Little... Yes, thanks, Rob. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess we'll see you maybe next week too. Then. Yeah, minutes. well, we can talk about um, Omnic a little bit if you want. Well, I think we're running a little. Are you guys up to that? You're running a little bit late. So can we do that next week? Is that okay? 
I, I don't. I'm not sure I'm gonna have time next week. I mean, that, I, I thought we were gonna do. It. That's okay, only five have, minutes. Okay, I could have. You want to talk a little let's bit about five, it? Let's I mean, do five minutes, Rob. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now, so, now, now, my guests are curious. You have us curious, okay? Okay. All right. Omnek, the woman Omnek Omnek, um, and you can see her website at Omnek 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 O M N E C O N E C dot com. Her life story is quite unique. She was um, living on Venus on what we would call the fifth dimension or the astral plane, and she has a quite an amazing history and a story of a life there. And she knew uh, she was about 147 years old, but still looked like a child because it's a different dimension type of thing there. And the masters had asked her if she would like to finish up her last physical incarnation on the physical plane. And they told her it would be a very hard lifetime, but they wanted to see what it would be like if a being from the fifth dimension lowered themselves to the to the third dimension and to live on earth and she would be taken up frequently during her life for physical examinations and checks and be healed of certain things and so forth and um, if she would agree to this she would have to remain completely secret to her identity for a long portion of her life which she did and this is what happened. She, with her uncle, um, who was trying to, had been working on some teleportation devices from the higher dimensions, wanted to actually put them into play in the, in the third and fourth dimension, which is really the physical plane. Mm -hmm. So they said some mantras. They went to the surface of the planet Venus because they're generally living and the interior and the astral society is pretty much on the interior of the planet, as well as the physical society of Venus. She said some mantras, and she was carried to the to the kind of the interdimensional city there called Rets. And this is kind of documented in the, the teachings of Ekankar by the original Ekankar, a teacher named Paul Twitchell. And it was there that she prepared for her mission to the Earth for uh, a couple of weeks. And then she boarded a cigar-shaped mothership, and she was taken to Tibet. And in Tibet, she lived at a monastery. It's called Katsupuri, and it's what the Venusians call a place called Agamdes. The Venusians are very close with the Tibetans and the Lamas there as they live a very pure and uh, uh, humble lifestyle. And there she lived for two years acclimatizing to, to gravity and eating food and dancing for the monks and learning the languages. And she would actually go into the town, this little blonde-haired girl who was 147 years old but looking like a child. And <laughs> here's a funny story. When she, when, when she got to the physical plane, they go, you have to go to the bathroom. She said, that's disgusting. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so she actually um, did. And the way this, this change was going to take a place was that she was taking over the body of a woman who was her twin sister in the French Revolution. Omnek had played an instrumental role in the French Revolution in the cause for liberty, equality, freedom, and justice. And her sister said, when the authorities came to get her, she said, I am she, and they beheaded her instead of Omnek. Wow. And in this lifetime, this young girl was, it was ordained and predestined to die in a, a bus accident. Her mother was an alcoholic and uh, had was unable to take care of her and was sending her back to, uh, I think it's Carolina, um, to uh, be taken care of by her mother. And so she arrived in a small spaceship with a car in it with a Venusian and a Martian, and they followed the bus until the accident took place, and then they 
hurried to board this this uh, bus in the chaos and removed the dead girl and uh, put Omnak took her clothes, put the note that the mother had left on her jacket and uh, put her in her stead. Now, the grandmother of this girl had not seen her since her birth. And she was several, mm -hmm. I don't know, probably five or six years old at this point. And she had actually come and visited the mother during the gestation process. So she would, um, uh, when, when physically um, lowered to vibration, would uh, have resemblance to this girl. Wow, that's she, fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. So she's like a walk-in, right? Not a walk-in. Not a walk-in. She, she actually retains her memories of all of her lifetimes and everything wow. from her time on Venus. Wendell Stevens introduced her uh, at a, a famous, uh, I think it's a big uh, UFO thing out in McLaughlin, Nevada. And she was kind of rejected here, but was embraced in Germany where she spent many years giving teachings and doing seminars. And she wrote a book called with Wendell Stevens called from Venus I came. Oh. And subsequently she has written, um, two other books, one called, uh, angels don't cry. And the third one is my message. Mm -hmm. And the angels don't cry is a chronicle of her very difficult life of, uh, being raped by her mother's father and having a child and, just it makes you sad to be a human when you hear the story that she went through, but she's come out of it with forgiveness and love. And she she holds a presence of joy and answers all questions freely. And she will be at the Mount Shasta conference this summer. So it'll be my first time meeting her. Omnek, Omnek. It'll be my first time meeting her. I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. So I guess. Um, I'll let you guys go. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank Sorry you for, I didn't realize we were coming in, Rob, and, and um, we we wish you the best, and we'll see you at Mount Shasta, uh, August 26th through the 30th, and they can get tickets at uh, Rob Rob Potter, the Promise Rebuild dot com. Yeah, and the Robert Potter public page, and um, we want you safe and healthy. Read everything on there. The schedule's up. Laura Eisenhower, Alfred Lambermon Weber. Michael Holman, uh, Raymond Keller, the man who lived on Venus. We have quite a few amazing guests, Scott Werner. Um, I can't remember them all right now, but it's going to be an amazing conference. It and will. Uh, I've, been assured, it I've been assured by the Venusians that we will have what they call an angel force there. Ooh. They will be remaining in uh, clandestinely incognito. And if you have your spider senses on, you might recognize <laughs> them vibrationally, but physically there's no way to tell. So it's going to be an uh, interesting time. And they're all around you. You may, you may be walking and talking with one right now. So uh, <laughs> you might just be. be aware that the angels forever attend us. Thank oh, you. Thanks, Rob. Love you. See you See you um, in August 26th. Hello. God bless. All Bye. Right. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. All right. So back to the show. <laughs> that was wonderful. So um, have you guys been to Mount Shasta at all? Or, um, well, I've stopped there a couple times yeah. so before. I Just in transit, but not yeah. 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 anything involved. Just in passing by. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm just in love with Washington, though. Yeah. I've, it's my first time in Washington State. And so I came to you guys by a friend of mine, Don Nicholson. I tried to get here last year uh, doing a women's retreat, and she said, you got to come to this place. It's magical. And they told she told me about Philly. So Philly. Would, yeah. <laughs> can you tell that story? It's a great story. So um, working with the, the plant consciousness and trees, and um, I was Googling her on YouTube and looking for plant music, music to play for my plants. And when I was doing that, I discovered music that is played by plants. And so I would listen to that and I enjoyed it so much. And after a couple of years of doing that, and I thought, well, they must be selling the unit that allows the plant to play the synthesizer. And they were the Federation of Dawn Men here, Italy, um, were the plant consciousness people of that community created it. 
and now they have a community in Colorado, and it was through the Colorado um, Dom Manter uh, uh, co community that I was able to get a U1. And so now for four years, we've been living with the U1 that allows plants to manipulate a synthesizer. And um, well, if we stepped upstairs, Philly would be playing away in the, in the, the room up there. She's um, quite happy these days and she plays day and night. She's pretty amazing. I know Don had told me about it. Like a, a plant that plays music, okay, it didn't quite it went right in and right out because it wasn't in my reality. And so when I went up to your space, your beautiful space, she just said hello and just started singing, mm -hmm. uh, playing yeah. the beautiful piano right away. Mm -hmm. And you can really kind of feel her energy in the music. And you said when your son was gone, it, she was quiet. When he came back, she was really excited and so played. excited about him coming. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she has quite she a personality. about different things. She yeah. enjoys visitors. and very much part of the family. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that. I, that's just one of the things that I love about yeah. your your Dragonscape here. Well, and, and to be fair, um, it's not, uh, Philly isn't the only musician in the plant world by any means. Uh, we have uh, enjoyed, uh, not to go, give a plug for that business, but Trader Joe's uh, basils, live basil, and bring oh. it in and, and uh, listening to Philly and the basil respond off of each other as they each get their turn, and because they have different voices, but then they'll teach each other. Yeah, things. teach each other their song. Oh, I love that. I love that. So, what brought you to Dragon's Gate to this 127 acres? And before we get to that, how did you guys meet? Well, we met twice. It was 24 years apart, and um, the first we're, we're, we're both celebration artists, uh, so it was at a medieval festival where I was doing costuming and mandrigal singing, and, and I was breathing fire and swallowing swords. And he was also a part of a cast of characters that wove a story for all the people that were visiting um, at the festival and the fair. So um, besides his shows that he did, he was also a um, a character in this cast of characters. And um, I was quite enamored of his show as it was Breeze Fire and Swallow Sword. A quite amazing thing to see and the first time I saw it. Um, I would always sneak off from whatever I was doing and see each of his shows. I still remember <laughs> the, his, his uh, schedule today. And um, we, we were both attached to other relationships. So we just met at that time and never saw each other again until 24 years later when my, um, my relationship, my marriage um, was dissolving and I never forgot him. And I went to the Oregon Country Fair to work it and to see if I could find him and meet him again. Hi. And she didn't at the fair. Oh. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was this, um, well, the, the fair is very much like a brigadoon, it appears and disappears once a year, you know. It takes a bit longer than a day. But what does appear and disappear in a day... Louder. What does appear and disappear in a day is the, or was, the barter fair, which was all the people who had things that didn't work because of the jurying uh, in the fair, but they were fair members and wanted to have a little marketplace, a bazaar outside. And I would go there every year because all the people I didn't get to see, there are so many at the fair, uh, I would often run into some of them at the barter fair. And uh, plus, you know, trade for this or that or pick up something nice and smoke salmon or whatever. And this year I was pretty quick. I walked through and looked down each aisle and went, no, not there, no, not there. And I got to this crossroads where I was just at that point of going, no, nope, nothing this year, and about to walk away when she walked up. Oh, perfect timing. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> I met at the crossroads at the Barber Fair the day after the Oregon Country Fair. Yeah. And we're still together now. And how many years is that? 
13, 13 years. Wow. Wow. 13 years. So. Yeah. So. The, two months after we met, we went to Burning Man together. And people all along the way were asking us how many years we'd been together. And if you can go to Burning Man and pack up in a 50 mile an hour sandstorm um, and That's not right. be unhappy with each other, <laughs> you, you're you doing it right. You That's know, a good sign. A good sign. That's you a know. good sign. Yeah. <laughs> Break down your camp while the sandstorm is burying it. So, and and with your stuff. background with um, with sword swallowing and and I you eat the fire? No, no, I do not eat fire. Okay. That was the that was the term when I first started back in the seventies, that everybody knew. So you were a fire eater if, if anybody spoke of it at all. Not like there were that many of us around, but um, fire eating just the physics of it is putting the flame out in your mouth, it's consuming the flame. Then there's spitting or blowing, which is putting liquid in your mouth and blowing it out over a torch, which is the first thing that my uncle told me, don't ever do that. And he was just thinking as, as far as how easy it is to blow your face off, much less the toxicity of this. And why would you, what is your mouth for but to get elements into your bloodstream? So why would you want to do that to yourself? You know? Whereas what I do is I, literally juggle the flames from the torches and I can uh, I can light uh, a cigarette in somebody's mouth I can light a torch at the end of my arm and I can do what they say you can't do which is to inhale when I have two torches in my mouth and bring all the flame all the way back in and then let it out um, born in the air of the dragon I breathe fire while I fight a motif. <laughs> and you bring that element here to Dragon's Gate. Well, yes, uh, to some degree. Uh, we are, we have been creating our own event here, but it's a very different thing. Uh, events have a life of their own. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if you pay attention to it in the consciousness. So, uh, yes, I have performed here, but that's not the main thing that it we're isn't. doing. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to get people's attention if they aren't uh, awake already. And I realized early on, if I can hold fire up and people will look, mm -hmm. then you better have something worthy to say. <laughs> and uh, we're getting to the point where there are a lot of people who are looking for something honest, something of value that will help them in their life, mm -hmm. as opposed to all the confusing stuff that's out there and de <coughs> excuse me deliberately put that way to confuse us right right trying to shed the lies and focus on what's real and mm -hmm. i find one of the most effective ways to do that is uh, to just simply go into nature mm -hmm. and to lay down in the ground and let the earth take the negative the toxins out of you and it's a good place to start yeah and then dragon's mm -hmm. gate is the place to do that and it certainly is. and and with you my dear friend you said um as a caretaker of crystals well my original reason for looking for the property which um later on after Mose and I searching for nine months and looking at property um, from all the way to Vancouver, BC, and um, further down towards Portland. Um, and we did find this piece of property halfway bet between Seattle and Portland, the area that we were looking for to be able to service that demographic, um, to be here kind of in the center. I had, when we met, I'd been in Seattle. Those had been in Portland. We were both very active in um, celebration arts in those communities and had family in those communities. So settling in the center, um, but also it was very important to find a piece of um, property that spoke to us mm -hmm. and, um, and a home for the giant crystal collection, which um, having two, two different properties before 
as to having the collection split and just how difficult it can be for people to living in the presence, mm -hmm. the day-to-day -day presence with the giants. Um, it's very, it's... Um, well, as I say, if you live around 15 tons of crystals, you will evolve. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's acclimatizing to living at a higher vibration mm -hmm. yeah. and, and staying with that vibration. I think as we move through, or I've seen with myself and my experiences, I've moved through my path, I kind of do things and feel like I reach a higher elevation. Then I go back to my, my normal life and, and those normalities kind of step it back down again. And living the life, this life here at Dragon's Gate, it's learning to live continuously day to day at that higher vibration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel it when you hit the gates. When you hit those dragon gates, you have these beautiful, beautiful gates that have a dragon facing each other on each side. And But before you get to the dragons, you have two lion guardians as well. Marble uh, lions. Marble lions. Peach li and blue. Peach and blue. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. So if you thought you knew beauty before, it's when you come up, you start getting excited because you know you're not in a, in a, in a place that's... Um, anything it's extraordinary it has to be because you have such a ta-da opening you know when you come in you it's like christmas and you get excited and and so when you when you drove through here and you knew you wanted to create this land for celebration events mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then but when you say i have 15 tons of crystal i don't think our audience gets that because you took me into the warehouse and you have like this big round, what what it was that? A dolomite ball. A dolomite ball. Sphere. And how how big is that? It's over a ton. A ton. Yeah. It's bigger than a refrigerator. Yeah. A regular refrigerator. So, I mean, it's like a giant's toys. Well, to give some idea of what that encompasses, it took four semis to bring my rock collection to the property. <laughs> okay. Say say that again. Four, four semis. Four semis to bring the entire rock collection to the to the property. It's amazing. And so you have the dolomite. Is that what you said? A dolomite? Mm -hmm. There's dolomite, dolomite sphere. spheres and clear quartz spheres and and the smoky and hydros and amethyst geodes and um, giant selenite and adventuring and um, tourmalines, black tourmalines, pink and green tourmalines, diopside, um, and much more. Oh, it's just it's just extraordinary. So I'm I'm been visiting here for two weeks now, and I'm and I'm wondering I'm having the best dreams, and when I go to sleep, I sleep really deep. And would that be a part of fifteen tons of crystalline on the property? Maybe you know. Well, the the crystals also um, love people coming here, and they do a great deal of the teaching in the dream time. Mm. So it really is lovely when people have the time to come. Mm -hmm and sleep and dream on the property and open to that possibility. Um, we're, we're on hip camp now, Ooh, and yes. so we're open to people being able to come. And the first site here for hip camp is Giant Crystal Retreat, which is on the back of the property, and where people can come and camp in campsites that are around a, a little glass gazebo that houses a giant crystal. I was able to sit with that in meditation. Beautiful, beautiful. And you have so many fires here. That's what I liked a lot. I'm a fire person. And so uh, each night they have a, a beautiful, each side has a beautiful fire pit. Fire mm -hmm. pit. So you can really do fire, have a, a relationship, build a relationship with fire in, in nature. Well, and... and we do uh, re-education work, as it were, you know, because on the one hand, everybody's been imprinted with Smokey the Bear and drowned that fire, and on the other hand, people have gotten into thinking of fire pits as garbage pits and just throw everything in there, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that's not fair to nature or to the next camper. Or so even to fire. We, yes, or especially to fire. We mm -hmm. ask that no... No um, petrochemical start. If you need help starting a fire, I'm happy to show you how to start a fire. And uh, it's it's not hard. Everybody should learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. If you don't need a can of gas, you can just actually start.
start a fire. A can of gas, right. Oh, no problem, I'll yeah. start a fire, yeah. right? Or briquettes. Uh, which or are oil. Petrochemically <laughs> stuck together, you uh, know? Uh, or cigarette butts in the fire. Those are not organic. They have uh, whatever it is. Uh, Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde and some other things in them Fibers. that don't just melt and go away. They're, you know, they're, mm -hmm. you're putting that into the earth. And, so, and if the wildlife gets a hold of it, it's very, it, very it toxic. Can, yeah, mm -hmm. it's very bad for them and it so, can kill them. And you have lots of wildlife here. We do. A great deal of wildlife. And so I tell um, our visitors, we're wilder than the, the state park that's close mm -hmm. by here. Mm -hmm. We have um, the coyote pack comes through here quite regularly. It's not unusual for them to pass through your campsite in the middle of the night. And we have black bear and cougar and bobcat lynx, um, eagles. We've had the opportunity to see snowy owl. Great horned owl. And mm -hmm. when it was passing through mm -hmm. and um, American vulture and a, a variety and, of hawks yeah. and and um, quite a variety of owls too. Different campers have reported um, being mm -hmm. late at night at their fires and hearing the owls in the woods around them. But, and I, I know when I was taking mm -hmm. my walk, my daily walk, um, I try to do a daily walk, and I'm walking and minding my own business and off in the distance, I see this little rabbit come. Hop, 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 hop. Little Not a care tail. in the world, little cottontail. Hop, 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 looks at me, still comes in towards me. I thought when he would see me, he would run. No, he just came closer. And he just, and I had the best communication with him. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you're here, what, what's happening? And, and then he goes, so he was kind of like this, and then it, almost automated in a way, because I'm, I, I haven't had that experience before. I'm a city girl. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so he just had his, he looked at me, I looked at him, and, and then he just turned around and hop, 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 and back off and into the, into his, uh, his home. And that was his home. And I just let him know, I'm, thank you for sharing your home with me. And it feels like that here. There's not a, it's just a nice wave between. Well, and. Mm -hmm. As I say, I mean, we let people know that there's a lot of wildlife and also, you know, it's like, you cannot chase the wildlife, but the wildlife can chase you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, give them respect. And, you know. Well, the, the little bunny you're talking about has been incredibly friendly and forthright, is not afraid of people, is not afraid of vehicles. And I know where he lives, I've gotten to know it. And, um... He seems to like to lead you up and down the road, and I've named him Peter Cottontail. Ah, uh, he looks Cottontail. like Peter Cottontail. Yeah, he's very friendly. He's very friendly. Um, interesting thing has happened this last couple of years <coughs> on the property um, with changing what we're doing. Instead of haying, we're allowing the meadows to grow. Um, trees are coming up, and wild roses, and quite a plethora of wild flowers. And along with that, there's a lot more rabbits and snakes and and uh, birds, songbirds that are living all through those meadows. Praying mantis and, and everything. Um, and the, in, the insect life yeah. is tremendous as well because we're allowing the land, um, it, it's managed lands, but within that management we're allowing it to be as wild as possible and it has really blossomed and grown underneath mm -hmm. that that different kind of caretaking. Well, and I understand as a caretaker, there's a lot of work to having a hundred and twenty-six and a half acre land, yes. okay? And so one of your jobs is uh, mowing. I mow because the guys were cutting everything. <laughs> and I decided I wanted to leave a lot more of the wildflowers, so. Yeah. And and you were saying if you had a bumper sticker, what would you say? And that cracked me up. Oh, no, I didn't want to share the bumper sticker. Oh, Somebody will steal it from me. Oh, wait, we can't do that. Do so you have but to soon. come? You have soon. to come to the to the uh, <laughs> Dragon's Gate Gardens, and and uh, it just cracks me up though. But it is what they do here. They really are the stewards of this land. And with that, I'd like to. Uh, we're almost to take a break, but when we come back, I would like to go into the spirits here and what's available to people here uh, for healing, for rejuvenation. And you two are quite the healers yourself. You're both the laser Reiki masters 
Um, so we have a few minutes. Can we talk a little bit about that before break? Would be great. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> well, when I met Moss, um, I was already doing a number of alternative healing modalities. I do sound healing. I use the giant crystals. Studied with Sir James Hughes. I'm um, using copper fixtures of sacred geometry along with a massage table, healing table with giant crystals on copper grid work. Not connected to the grid, just connected to itself. Um, and also with you sound, and when I met Mose, um, we enjoyed learning each other's modalities, more about them, and it was from him that I learned about where where he was in studying Reiki. Which I had, uh, I had connected with Taylor and Roy at a um, expo in Portland, and uh, they were offering uh, you know, just a, a little talk, a 20 minute talk, a kind of lost leader thing to get mm -hmm. people to, you know, and they asked how many of us were, you know, bothered by, you know, just the tapes in your head, the old stuff, the places where you screwed up, the things that, you know, you can go over and, and uh, I said, wouldn't it be nice if that all just went away? And, and I was, yeah. And so, they stood there and basically wiggled their fingers at us for a few minutes, and and then for the next week, it went away. And I thought I really want to understand what that was, and started uh, working with them. Um, eventually, uh, moved to Ricky Ranch for uh, one or two years there. Um, but we really, uh, in that time, I had. I had um, attained my regular Reiki master, uh, but I found it to be, it was good, but it's also a very passive form in that you are, we, we always are, we're the channel, we're not the healer, mm -hmm. we're the channel for the energy, and it's up to the other person's higher power, their divine spirit, to to use that energy, to decide whether healing that would be the perfect thing for the spirit or whether it's not a good thing because mm -hmm. they need to learn something from that. We can't force it on somebody else. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We can only give them the energy. If it's not used, it's not used. But with the laser Reiki, um, you're still within that. You don't work on other people without their permission or at least the permission of their higher spirit. Mm -hmm. But um, you can be much more specific in a variety of things. Laser, excuse me, <laughs> psychic surgery, um, working uh, on uh, mitigating problems that bleed over from other lives. Um, I had an experience. I, many people that I worked with uh, in the classes talked about being able to see um, maybe a, a, a lance or an arrow or you know something from another experience stuck in people and they'd remove it and the person would be relieved and I was working at one of these other expos uh, with Taylor uh, having uh, worked with the with them for years there and it was the first time that I actually saw that and it, I when I say saw I don't mean visually I could see it mm -hmm. but when I walked around to the back of this person I could, I could energetically see it. Mm -hmm. You could feel it. And they you were, feel it? they were talking about not in a visceral way, mm -hmm. you know, um, but uh, he was talking about <coughs> what the pain was and how he'd been doing all these things. And he was in the middle of a sentence when I pulled it out, and he went, "Oh, it went away. What did you do?" Oh. Uh, we had. I had already uh, worked previous to that uh, for years in doing uh, distant healing and a variety of other things, uh, fire walking, and recognized that, uh, you know, it's a sad thing that we aren't given a um, an owner's manual, an appropriate <laughs> owner's manual, right. because we know so little and achieve so little of what this body, this community of 
microbes and bacteria and the little bit of DNA that's us, you know, uh, what it can actually do, what right. it's capable of. Right. Uh, and, so. and, and that part of us that we don't know, but we can feel it or know. Mm -hmm. And the people that come here are people that are seeking for that truth, right? They know that there's we hope so, more yeah. than <laughs> what they've been told, right? There's got to be more than just shopping and, you know, and working with your nose to the grind for the rest of your life. And we talked about this earlier, yeah. where you, to have a life, a real life. To, to uh, Are you existing or are you living? Right, right. And living suggests that we're actually enjoying what's going on around us and taking part in life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, a shared thing, not something we do just by ourselves. Right, you know. right. And and so you are creating community here at Dragon's Gate. I've seen so many different kinds of people come through. We mm -hmm. met uh, the UFO... Um, uh, so, uh, the UFO. Jane from the UFO yes. uh, Fest. Fest. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we met uh, Linda and Steve, Steve from right. Wolfhaven. From Wolfhaven. Right. I mean, Wolfhaven. this is like the spot, okay? If you're <laughs> going to come, you don't know who's going to show up. Oh, we met Annie. Um, who had Ani. the. Ani. Ani, yes. Raven. Ani, Ani Raven Haynes, who yeah. used to have a show on KBU for 24, 24 years. 24 years, okay? Positively revolting. <laughs> yeah, a lovely, uh, yeah. lovely show it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you bring so much here, and, and your lovely dogs, you have the four, the family of dogs. What do you call a family of dogs? A, a pack. A oh, pack. Yeah. A pack of dogs, that's right. A pack of our wonderful dog sitting here, our guardians, and having time. And I do want to um, thank Marco for uh, being our, uh, our chat monitor today. Thank you, and helping me out, getting things set up out here, as you know. Those that have followed me for over the years, it's very rare that I get to actually sit with people and actually interview people. So I'm really, really excited to have this. I'd like to have more of this. And I want to thank Yvonne um, uh, for being the beautiful herbalist. Uh, and flower she, specialist. Your yeah. in-house flower specialist that walks around here. And just, I mean, she created this today for us too. So we're about to go on break. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the Cosmic Oracle Show. Make sure you go to dragonsgategardens.com. Check this place out. Uh, if you can camp, uh, you can do that also at dragonsgategardens.com. And also, at, is it hip? Friend of the camping starts with hip camp. Yeah, hip through camp. hip camp. Hip camp. And hip com. camp is camping on private property like Airbnbs, staying mm -hmm. at somebody's house. Mm -hmm. So it should be uh, really fun, and um, and and they can. We're gonna talk when we get back from break about the services mm -hmm. that you provide here as well. Um, so it's mm -hmm. services, and you have a gift shop, and I and you have this amazing kitchen, and you have an amazing community mm -hmm. center too. So everyone, stay where you are. We'll be right back at 6:04 while we take this break. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm. Freedomslips.com. We'll be right back after this message. Most guys freeze. That's his freedom cortex looking for an answer it doesn't have. See? Even your brain knows it's new. God is feeling with the gentleman right now. Whether you know it or not. The heart's been fast. It's getting a little out of the brain. The neurobiological system is telling it to run. But your knees is too weak to move. Fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. That is mere insanity. And do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real. 
But fear is a choice. We are all telling ourselves a story. You're listening to Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com. 100% listener supported radio. Reporting to danger. Unafraid. Right here, where information never sleeps. Revolution. Revolution. Radio. so-called mainstream media is best described as controlled propaganda. Countless news stories are either totally ignored or spun with half-truths, and because of this, essential facts and vital information are often compromised. Join Dr. Ott every Friday night on Studio B at 10 p.m. Eastern and learn why the story behind the story was nominated for a Peabody Award in its second year of producing unparalleled broadcasting excellence in 1997. That is, if you really care about learning the truth. All right, thanks for listening while we took that short break here at Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com. And now we're going to get back to your host. Okay, welcome back, everybody, to the second part of the Cosmic Oracle Show. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay, and we are coming to you live from Tonino, Washington. And I have in the beautiful 126 and a half da, 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 acres of the Dragon Gates Garden. We have their uh, beautiful stewards joining us here tonight, and we have uh, Ariel, and we have Mose. And thank you again for. And just to, taking your busy time out. I have seen these guys. They haven't sat down much, okay? They're always on the go doing something or greeting someone or taking care of someone or doing something. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. So it's our pleasure. <laughs> we're actually not in Tonino. We're between Tonino and oh, Bukoda, the correct. big towns. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's a local. This is for you locals out there, okay? Yeah, we yeah. got you covered. <laughs> And so what Ariel and I were talking the other night, and we found out that we're cousins. Distant cousins. Distant yeah. cousins through the Scottish uh, bloodline. So we were cracking up how small this world is mm -hmm. in, in such a way. So, so when they come here to this community, and there's a circle of trees in the back, a beautiful circle of trees. Um, can you tell them um, a, a you're what you experienced the there. there? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, when we had the first um, Tree of Life Festival, <clears throat> one of our top presenters was David Yarrow, who's a world-renowned dowser, and he's been traveled all over the world to help people understand the energies of the properties and why certain things are happening or get what to mm -hmm. get a. Um, to, to know what's going on energetically with the flow of the land. And we brought him here as a presenter and he wanted to know 
what was happening here at Dragon's Gate before he presented at our festival. So he came, he'd come and visit for an afternoon, and he would leave five days later. He was so enamored of what he discovered here that he came again and again and um, to really map out the energy flows on the property. And from this backyard, from where the, the, the viewership can't, or the readership can't see, but um, here we can see there's a rise, uh, quite a pinnacle that's here in the back and has trees that's growing on it. And um, David informs us that three dragon paths cross there. And a lot of people ask, as and I asked when he told me that, I said, like, okay, what's a dragon? I've heard of ley lines and mm -hmm. I understand ley lines. So explain to me what a dragon path is. And he explained that the dragon paths are the major um, energy lines of which all the ley lines flow off of. So um, when we hear in, in England and they talk about the ley lines or um, where the Michael line mm -hmm. and the Marion lie, they, those are not actually ley lines. Those are dragon paths. Those mm -hmm. are the, the very um, high energy lines. And then after that, smaller um, energy lines flow off of it. So he was very surprised to find there were so many dragon paths here. He discovered the three on his first um, visit, and he inquired of us why we named it Dragon's Gate when he started discovering all the dragon paths. And I explained to him from my perspective with working with the giant crystals, the dragons are my guardians, and they have been with me all my life. They've protected me, and they protect the work that I've come here to do. And, um, and they've been very present in my life, my, my whole life since my childhood. And, um, and, and then uh, fast forward to just before I met Mose, I kept having a regular dream of me sleeping with a giant red dragon. And it was a regular dream I was having. And, and, um, and then when I met him, I, was, I felt the need to tell him about my dream, which I had just had again the night before. And um, he told me, I am the red dragon. And I said, I recognize that in you. And that's why I um, wanted to share with you the dream. And I never had the dream again after that. Huh. Of course, you got the real thing. Because right? then I started sleeping with the red dragon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk then red dragon energy. You know, what's the energy of a dragon? Well, when you come to Dragon's Gate, and or if you, you will see on the front gate, two red dragons facing each other, which are the guardian dragons. If you study Celtic mythology and the dragons of Celtic mythology, the guardian dragons, there are two of them and they are red and they guard the energies of the, the higher energies of the earth mother. So that's how it's depicted in the Cel Celtic. And so I've chosen to carry that forward here, of course, in honor of my partner as well. Mm -hmm. So you didn't just both say, oh, I think we'll call it Dragon's Gate Garden. Well, it was Dragon's Gate, and then we added the gardens and wilds mm -hmm. on afterwards, but um, mm -hmm. for for different reasons and different background, that's another you know longer story, but um, it just really suited both of us and the property. And um, now we've been here 10 years, and it's obviously extremely fitting. 10 years. Mm -hmm. 10 years. 10 yeah. years. So you've had an idea, a vision of what you wanted to create here, and it has a life to itself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how different is it from when you envisioned it from the beginning? Um, well, uh, yes, different, but um, not that different mm -hmm. in that uh, much of our vision, you know, I mean, we each had our own vision, but the part that we shared that, you know, um, I don't think it was that detailed. And uh, being celebration artists, you learn to make art with what's available. Mm -hmm. You go with what you're doing at the time. <laughs> and uh, so it's been an adventure, uh, learning about the land, learning about uh, bringing nature back into it as the main groundkeeper, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and, and all that. And at the same time, 
uh, recognizing that, as you were saying, if we're trying to be farmers and pay and do all these different things, we don't really have time for anything else. Um, but coming into it, learning things like, uh, there's a wonderful video, 12 Aprils, uh, that talks about how he moves in a longer story, but teaching us that instead of taking the hay and giving it to the cows, just let the cows move around and eat it there. <laughs> and there's other, you know, there's, it sounds more simplistic than it is, but mm -hmm. but there are things that just work that don't involve uh, petrochemical uh, or this or that. And getting back to how farms through time have worked, mm -hmm. because nature will work with us if we have the brains to see it right. to work and with to those utilize seasons. that, the seasons and the rhythms of these things. And, mm -hmm. and uh, just the way, I mean, if you have cows that go through a field, they defecate, they, they fertilize it, mm -hmm. but then you got flies, unless you have turkeys who come through and after the cows, and, and then the chickens come through and they eat the larva from the flies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, there's a rhythm to everything and nothing is wasted. It, it comes back in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So it's the recognizing that and to keep the pool clean. You know, <laughs> at the same time. If everything comes back, then why do I want to put plastic or oil products or right. anything like that in this yeah, when we don't need it? Mm -hmm. We can obviously have a much healthier life without those things. And I, I know that I found, I've only been here two weeks, but that, and I don't know if you found that to be true, maybe you didn't need it, but I felt the sense of slowing down mm -hmm. when I got here. I really needed that. Because I think we're so busy. We keep ourselves just busy, you know? Well, that's part of the current cultural paradigm is to always be busy, always, what's the next thing? What's the next thing I'm going to buy? What's the next thing I'm going to do? What's the next thing that, you know, that, that I need to acquire? And, and yet Americans, on, their other, on the other hand, are very addicted to their conveniences. And... Coming out to Dragon's Gate is a chance to be with your family or your loved ones or to have time to yourself and reconnect with nature. Get your feet on the ground. Get your back on the ground. Take a walk through the forest and breathe the pheromones um, of the trees, which slow you down. It lowers your heart rate and your blood pressure. And it's, it's a health prescription. Doctors are actually prescribing it now and where they'll examine a child, and this is happening in America, in the United States, as well as other countries where in Japan, forest bathing, and no, you don't have to take your clothes off to do it, it's just walking in the woods, but how it really benefits a body. And um, where doctors are examining um, young children and discovering things about them, and one of the things they'll ask is, how much time do you spend outside? How much time do you spend outdoors? And a lot of the time, the answer is next to no time. And where they're prescribing for the child to be out in a playground or where the woods is or to get out of the house, get out of the buildings, get away from the devices mm -hmm. and to take a break from all of that and just be natural. We say, you know, slow down, but really it's come back into sync with Earth's <laughs> rhythm. Mm -hmm. Right. What could be healthier mm -hmm. for us? We are not apart from Earth. We are a part of okay. Earth. Mm -hmm. Can you say that again for us? Uh, we uh, are not apart from Earth. We are a part of Earth. Yeah. That's beautiful. So start that. behaving like it. <laughs> God, burn it. That's right. <laughs> right. And, and breathe. And yeah. breathe and, and let breathe. go and let go, right? And, and let breathe. go. And breathe. And the beauty here, and breathe in all that beauty that's here. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Oh, I, how amazing. tall are all those trees we're looking at right here? That's like over a hundred feet. Over a hundred feet, yeah. right? There's yeah. a whole slew of them there, and then there's this beautiful line mm -hmm. of blue spruces, and there's a whole mm -hmm. bunch of trees back there, and then you have your beautiful, amazing, award-winning pool. Yes. <laughs> I love the pool. <laughs> one of my favorite things. 
and all the the flowers and the flora and the fauna and and your bees your relationship just with your bees we were talking about that but the the bees are so important and um anyone who enjoys eating knows how important bees are or should and know how <laughs> important bees learn. are um with me working with the stones this last few years one of my um, most favored stones, not the prettiest of them by any means, but one of the most favored is um, Shungite and how the, this wonderful slate, natural slate, local slate from the Russian area of Karelia. And um, it's, it's a, a black stone that has a little bit of pyrite running through it. And it comes usually in two different forms, elite, which is 80% carbon and it's such a high carbon content that you cannot shape it. And then there's also silver shungite that can be shaped and it's 30% carbon. But the molecular structure of it is fullerenes. And that, and it's, so it's like looking at a geodesic dome, net one next to the other and the other. And all of those chambers that are part of its molecular structure allows it to be like the perfect detoxer so in in its presence it will detox you it will take the toxins off of your system the other unique property that it has that no other stone has so far that we found in that is it mitigates the negative emf effects of our cell phones our our wi-fi um, all these uh, microwaves that we are infusing our atmosphere that we're living in and <clears throat> we're just beginning to discover the deleterious effects of bathing the human body with so many waveforms, these uh, microwaves, and the effect that it has on a human body. But by utilizing a certain set of stones and certain um, devices that have been made, energy designs, and some of them incredibly simple and very affordable, mm -hmm. and how we can correct that and have a create a safer environment for ourselves and our loved ones. I, I purchased some from you. Yeah. I have them by my computer and I also put one um, stone in a glass of water and yes. you put it by your your bed Yes. and then you let it stay overnight and you wake up in the morning and then you drink it and you have shungite in your water. In yes, your water you have to show to help them this. Purify the, yeah. To help purify the water so and you have it in your water vessels yeah. and it's um, in other stones that you use, because I used to work with people in working with people, highly recommend black tourmaline and black obsidian and hematite, which I still love and enjoy. Um, and they're excellent stones, but you really must clean them, energetically clean them every week. And the lovely thing about shungite is that it's self-cleaning. It, it doesn't need to be cleaned. Huh. And um, the other wonderful thing I've discovered about shungite is back the health the that it affords the bees, which we started with the bees and yes, we come back to the yes. bees. And by getting <coughs> three large pieces, a large piece of stone is all relative, isn't it? Yes, but, uh, not but 15 not tons of it. Yeah. Right, but, <laughs> but, but what they're talking about in a large stone of, of elite shungite is about the size of an almond roca. Okay, you know, that's pick, you that's, know About the right. size of an almond roca. And for your hive, you want to have a normal hive. You would like to have three of those pieces. And then on the other side, you want to have a little dish of shungite powder. And if you get on Facebook and you look up shungite honey or shungite bees, you can see a lovely video of the bees flying in from doing their uh, collecting their pollen and coming back to the hive. And when they land in front of the hive, they walk over to the shungite and they walk on it to clean the toxins off of their bodies and correct the negative EMF effects. And then they go into the hive, do their work, what they're doing in the hive. And then when they come back out, they walk over to the little dish of the powder and they pack the powder on their legs the same way they would the pollen. And they take the powder back into the fields where they are pollinating to help heal the fields with the same thing by carrying the shungite powder out into the, their range. That's, that's an incredible, incredible story. It's just like, what? The, the well, shungite help, and it's, and it's stopping colony collapse. By having shungite with your bees, it's stopping colony collapse, which has become a 
real concern by the beekeepers, um, certainly in the U.S. We don't have any hives here. We have a lot of bees. Uh, <laughs> a lot in of visitors. Arlington. But one of the things we like to be able to do here, uh, we found online from uh, Russian experience where they have bee beds where you can actually go sleep, go lay down, lay down, and be in the vibration of the bees, and it is incredibly healing. We were talking about bee that. Houses, bee songs. Bee beds. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Bee wow. Wow. That's bee positive. Really. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, that would change you. Just like coming here can change you. These are just some of the knowledge. You walk around and these guys are like, this is who they are. I'm so glad we're, we're getting to know them and the wisdom they bring here after having this for 10 years. And and I would like to talk a little bit about the Tree of Life that you, this was your third year, but but uh, as being celebration artists, what exactly is that, celebration artists? Celebration artists is a group of eclectic artists that are, Costumers, performers, um, entertainers, uh, producers, seamstresses, and painters, and um, people with screw guns and boards. And mm -hmm. they're the people who create the parades, who create the festivals, um, you know, do the sound system on the. It's, it's that whole group of people that helps put on your parades and your festivals to celebrate life. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the and we're, life celebrations artists. We're a bit jaded because we've been doing this for oh decades, and we've been doing it <laughs> at uh, the Oregon Country Fair, which uh, is a gathering of uh, non-blood and blood families that stretches. Last year was its fiftieth year. Fifty years. But um, you're talking uh, multiple marching bands. <laughs> Uh, innumerable stages with vaudevillians from all over the world uh, that come and, and grace those stages. Uh, Paul Puppets, uh, incredible, uh, just amazing different acts that we, it's, it's like a normal weekend for us. <laughs> uh, but if you haven't been there, uh, it, it, uh, it's hard to imagine that much color, that much uh, silliness, yeah. that much time and effort invested in silliness huh. for the sheer sake of sharing it huh. and to enliven what we do. I love that. For the purpose of making people smile, laugh, and enjoy mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. And in the big business meeting <clears throat> when I was still on the board, uh, where a business trainer came in and worked with us as a group to come up with what was what was the term? What was it that we all got? Why did we all do country fair? Mm -hmm. And what we eventually came to was psycho spiritual rejuvenation. Ooh. So that's what we are carrying on here too. Yes. That same thing that um well it, talking I want to make another sign to put out front, you know, <laughs> caution leaving normal <laughs> you may need to reset your watches when you exit you know uh, that um, it really is uh, is a chance for other people to come experience some of that of that higher vibration mm -hmm. of that peaceful vibration of that synchronicity with nature mm -hmm. and what do the animals have to tell you you know I mean just that and that can that can help somebody survive for a whole year if they get to camp once a year yeah. and this time of life why wait for once a year you know <laughs> yes. we have people who came out here were blown away and when they left the same day they left they booked two more dates <laughs> <laughs> i want to do that again <laughs> that's awesome and what type of people do you bring to the like your last year or are you looking for um, the future? Well, we have, uh, for the first year, we were in much more a uh, classic uh, festival kind of a schedule set up so that you had to choose which workshops Multiple you could see, which meant you wouldn't the see time. the other ones that were going oh. on. And uh, 
David's workshop, everybody wanted to be at David Yarrow's workshop. Everybody wanted to do plant consciousness. Plant consciousness, that's right. And uh, with so Philly the, and the synthesizer. The next year, <laughs> the next year, we switched and we went because at the request of our our attendees. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also because that was then we were aware of the dragon paths. So our mm. theme was follow the dragon path. Ooh. And so instead of a, a spread out schedule and you hit and miss some parts of it, a serpentine where we all mm. take that path together and work and do together each of the community. workshops and in a oh. theatrical sense build up to a crescendo <gasps> of information and experience where we really do feel like we have become a deeper community with each other. We've learned, we've rejuvenated, and we're ready to go out again in the world and, and take that. Was that successful? Oh, yes. Extreme. Oh, I, people really I bet that. that, I love yeah. the idea. Why haven't we done that before instead <laughs> of, you know, all it's that. Like, don't make me choose. Let's just all do it together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So where we go, we go together. Uh -huh. That's, you know, from the First Nation. Totally community building. Yeah. 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 I Makes love that. And so hopefully you will have it next and, year. Um, and then also the musicians we get. Um, to help, you know, give us um, when the downtime and integrate what we've learned during the day, but also to enhance the whole atmosphere. Um, the first year we had Code Nectar, and um, this year we'll be having Code Nectar. And they're, they're uh, how do you describe them? They're kind of out of this world, well, kind of like Dragon's Gate. <laughs> and they channel music. And yes. They do have music that they've created that they do play the same things each time. But they it's also much more do of this the thing. Moment. This, they do it's this jazz. thing where it is. Well, it's not really jazz. It's it's uh, not really folk. It's not really. It's it's heart. Uh, and it must yeah, be just it's kind of very spiritual. Mm -hmm. um, drum and and um, those harmony drums and and. And a weaving. You can go back it's from amazing. trance into comedy, into, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's um, very evocative and very of the moment. Very, mm -hmm. uh, they can play off of what's happening in that moment and expand mm -hmm. on it. And one of the things I really appreciated about them was that they could do that during the workshops so that it was not, uh, you know, you have. Here, let's sit down for teaching. Now we have, oh, let's come over here for music, but a blending of them. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So kind of like a creative flow, mm -hmm. a nice, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I get here. It's this go with the flow. Let's mm -hmm. just go with the flow here. It's like you have an idea, you have a plan, and then, you know what? There's some beautiful blooms there on that. <laughs> you know, we got to go check that out. You know, we got to go do this or go do that. I've given up the idea that I am in charge of my day, no matter what <laughs> I think I'm going to do. If something else comes up, I'm going to have to do that. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, I was going to go out wood cutting the other morning and get out before it got hot. And then Steve called, Linda had broken down. I had to go rescue <laughs> Steve because Steve gave his car to Linda and et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's like, and that's part of community it's too. It's part of community. And you, you're not, uh, things happen, life yeah. happens. Yeah. And you're there for one another. So it's not just some set schedule and this is how it's going to be. It's, uh, mm -hmm. go with the flow. Well, yeah, go with the flow. Yeah, go with the flow. And then I do want to come back to something when, uh, about your being the fairy queen. And I just think it's so important. And I came here. I think specifically personally to talk about that and that you hold that here on the earth plane and, and uh, you do it in such a beautiful way. And um, I would like for you to tell us what is it to be a, a fairy queen. Well, just the other night, um, a new member asked me if I channel and um, I, don't, I don't speak of it much, but I do channel the earth mother I now, after four years of having a relationship and building with her um, channel, Tiamat, the Cosmic Mother of All Dragons, she works very closely with me. And um, and I also channel a, I, I move into that persona. It's one of me as a master customer. It's one that I've really embodied 
in so many ways, being the crystal fairy or the fairy queen and um, gifting the children in years and years and years of parades in Seattle, the children that um, were lining the parade grounds and with a flock of fairies with me children, my own children and other children that I would borrow and dress in my set of costumes. And, um, and, and she sings as well. And being a sacred singer and weaving that in with mm -hmm. it. And um, do we have enough time for yes. a song? Yes. Gee, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Where deeps the rocky island, a slurfwood in the lake, there lies a leafy island. Where flapping herons wait A drowsy water runs There we fear a fairy fight Full of berries And of rare stolen cherries Come away Zoe Rose has got to get in there. Like, hey, the baby girl, did you come and you wanted to be interviewed today, huh? Yeah, you did. You're really beautiful. I know the first time I heard it, I cried. Okay, baby girl. Sit. But, sit. But, sit. That way. There Zoe we go. Zoe. There we go. There we go. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Wow. Wow. I know when I work with my grandkids and, and, um, you know, we've lost so much of that, or I, I did mm -hmm. growing up. Um, it was more like something I had to go read in a book or or go fantasize in my head, but I didn't have anyone around me that really carried that. Mm -hmm. So I had to go look for it myself and go find it myself. And the, the best place to find that is in nature, right? But then to have a, build that relationship with them, if, if our listeners were wanting to, build a relationship with the fairy kingdom, what would you suggest they could do? I would suggest get out, go outside and get your feet on the ground. And if you have to find a nice grassy place to put, lay your, lay your body down. And uh, mm -hmm. as uh, we, we were, one of our new theme songs this year that we're going to use is a song by John Denver. No, by Joe Henry that John by Denver Joe made Henry famous. That John, Denver has sings and the cool and green and shady and we feel it just really says it all it's um so look it up on YouTube and okay. give it a listen it's a Lovely. really beautiful song and it's about getting back outside and connecting with nature again and just just doing that mm -hmm. taking a break and just doing that and the and other thing that I could suggest would be that uh, start giving respect to those entities put a little mm -hmm. altar out mm -hmm. leave a little wild space don't cut your whole lawn mm -hmm. leave a little nature mm -hmm. and in that give them they like whiskey <laughs> give them a little whiskey give them a little of this a little of that from time to time yeah. they appreciate it yeah i was told that you bring well. a little a red wine okay. and a little uh, cream and a little honey uh -huh. and mix that and mm. Give it like in a little thimble full uh -huh. for a, a little mm -hmm. gift or. Well, we have given um, whiskey before. I like whiskey, and Linda. you know, I mean, if you set a, a, a shot of whiskey out, it will dissipate over time, but it takes a while. Mm -hmm. This would be gone the next day. Wow! When we give it as an offering, yes, yeah, uh -huh. it disappears within a day or two. <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> Do you have altars and set on your grounds, specific altars where people can? Oh, speaking of which. <laughs> Why do we? Oh, do you, right? <laughs> oh, my 
we're looking at creating this more. This lady here. We want to do more fairy houses and install them in different places on the land oh, so as people are walking great. around mm -hmm. and exploring can discover that mm -hmm. and help fire off their imaginations and um, yeah, just help people really return to how they used to feel and think in childhood and we've lost that and um, you know and and Play with your children. If you have children, play with your children. Mm -hmm. Get on the ground with them. Even if your children are grown. I still, <laughs> yeah, yesterday and the day before, we were here ce celebrating my daughter's 33rd birthday. And we were playing D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, Yay. together for two days, adventuring and being heroes and <laughs> and um, saving people, finding <laughs> treasures and um, all done in the imaginal realm, but while we're sitting outside and enjoying this beautiful atmosphere, but also enjoying each other's imaginations and creating these beautiful imaginal worlds. And it's really play therapy, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, and something that can keep a family together. Um, certainly have been in uh, enjoying using devices more. So my daughter lives down in Santa Barbara and most of us are up here. Um, but sometimes as uh, another young lady who plays with us in Bellingham. So getting together and doing it with that help has been very fun. Wow. That sounds good. Fairies, all about fairies. I, and when I first got here, I'm thinking, okay, let's, let's start talking, to, making time for the fairies, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. the trees. And the trees. And, and the plants the, and the flowers. Sing and the to air them. And, and listen to them. And talk to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and we were talking the other day about um, the Tree of Life again, where that comes up and where part of your work is helping to restore her, helping to yes. restore Gaia itself. And mm -hmm. Well, and that's partly by helping people reconnect with her. Because we are her children. We come from her body. We will return to her body. And um, but to reconnect with her and to to enjoy that connection. To, to like anything they say about relationship, you get out of it what you put into it. So the more you put into it, the, the deeper that connection comes and the easier it is for you to hear that voice. Mm -hmm. And just taking that walk and how about some quiet? I think yeah. I'll have a serving of quiet. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I, <laughs> and I sometimes do that to the people that I'm with. It's okay. Now when we, when we enter, when we're walking up to the forest, we can talk and ask questions. But once we enter the forest, let's then listen to the forest and mm -hmm. let's do it in silence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a very rare thing for many people to just be comfortable in silence. There's a nervousness that goes to not filling the space, mm -hmm. but um, it gives us a whole other uh, opening. And recognizing, we say fairies, um, uh, but it's the elemental world. Mm -hmm. oh, and yes. to put it, you know, for those who have a harder time dealing, you know, all oh, right, they're with the fairies, right, that's really <laughs> ding-a-ling, you know. Um, I would suggest a wonderful author, a Slovenian man, Marko Pugnasic. Okay, uh, can you spell that? Uh, good luck. Uh, <laughs> but I can tell you his, uh, he has uh, numerous, books. numerous books, but the one I'm thinking of specifically is uh, working with Elemental beings, or is it working with nature El spirits and elemental, elemental beings. beings? Working with nature spirits and elemental and he, beings. And he explains more, he is able to communicate with them, and he explains more the depth of how they work. And I've, I've been amused and gratified to see over time here how science and spirituality are dovetailing back into, we yeah. come full circle, yeah. and, and each is corroborating the other mm -hmm. if it's just if you just look with an open eye to see that and here he's able to explain you know there are elemental beings that are 
necessary for the forming and gestation of some of our organs. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be alive without elementals. Elementals come through in, from, uh, from ancient uh, religions and uh, their energy is still there in the current cathedrals. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, uh, anyway, fascinating work from him, and, uh, I was hoping that we would see him this year, maybe next year. Ooh, so, he, he uh, was to come for a conference, ooh. and but because of the situation in the world, that But next year, oh, but they all, are going to be streaming that in, I believe it's in October, and that's the Fairy Human Relations Congress will mm -hmm. be doing right. an online streaming which will include presentations by Marco Pignasic and um, also Caitlin I Matthews, Caitlin Matthews um, who is also to be a physically come and be a presenter, but because of the situation didn't and, happen. And, and, um, and, and quite a number of others, and well worth looking David at. David Spangler, was it? Or? Yeah, yes, David Spangler okay. of Finhorn. Oh, fame. Yeah. Mm. And that's the, the, the fairy UFO? Very Fairy Human, human Relations, Relations Congress. Congress. Very and though there Relations are humans, many of us wear wings and dress up as fairies. <laughs> the Most number of me. the elementals, the fae who are there, vastly outnumbers the humans. We're, we're, <laughs> oh, I love that. We're about 150 to 200 I normally in a gathering, and um, the fae folk number in the thousands. Oh. And I have photographs to oh. prove it, mm. where you can see the humans. And then the atmosphere is just layered and layered and layered with thousands mm. of orbs. Mm. Mm. Love it. <clears throat> really quite stunning. You know, my first introduction into fairies was with Brian Proud's work. Uh -huh. mm. And and because um, you think of fairies, it, it's not the Disney Tinkerbell fairy right. that we're talking about here, right? So, no, they're dark and light. And mm -hmm. there's also, <clears throat> there's mean-spirited ones. It's not all this light and it's not all light and love and mm -hmm. fa fantasy mm -hmm. <clears throat> that you know in, in the old countries they don't think of fairies as we do here they are very aware of um that there's just like there are human beings there are those of the light and there are those of the dark and um sometimes you need to be really aware of especially the ones of the darkness and and put something out, you know, a little whiskey or something else, just to <laughs> pacify them and mm -hmm. keep them happy. And it's 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 and it's not a matter of worshiping them at all. It's not, but it's working with that other mm -hmm. form of life that we call the fey folk. We were at one point uh, accused of working with uh, or worshiping. Uh, fairies and dragons and, and crystals and crystals. And crystals. And oh like, my! Uh, no, <laughs> that's what we said. And, uh, no, we work with them. We don't worship them. It's a bit big different. Big difference, yeah. right? It's a different big difference. Hello. No, we work with them. We do not worship them. Yeah, it's, a, it's a group effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you guys definitely walk your talk here. That's for sure. Oh, you can hear the breeze coming through. Came, hello. <laughs> Came through to say hi, and uh, and be a part of this as well because they're right here. Well, they are. They're right here today. Mm -hmm. What else can we do for you? Like, what else? Can, how can we serve today? <coughs> well, mm. as recently Tiamat and the Council of Dragons, which have been working with me. Um, for four years and have really deepened this last year and I've been it's been requested that I be an ambassador for the Dra Dragon Council mm -hmm. and to give a message to humanity that you are the light be the light it is most needed now in this time of great darkness and know that we are here to help you that we will protect you and we will watch over you as your guides and your guards and your guardians. That's huge. And it's important to meditate. It's important to do your self work. And it's important to listen to the dream time. 
that they will reach out to us and help us through those different um, modalities. Mm -hmm. and, and have an open mind to all of it, right? Yes. Yes. Big heart, open mind, mm -hmm. and uh, all the help that we need to go through this cycle. Not that mm -hmm. we're stuck here and we have, no. we're powerless. <laughs> Doesn't no. work that way. No. no, it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a team effort. Not just human, mm -hmm. not just faith, not just the Earth Mother. It's all of us working together. And and with your water element here too, you have a strong water element. I know. I know. It's we talk a lot about fire, but I really feel the water element on your land as well. I think the waters of Dragon's Gate are very blessed. The water that comes from this land, from the wells in this land, are um, just really of the highest quality. When we were two years being here, we brought a high-level psychic, Alice Molter Serrano, Molter Serrano and, um, and she did a reading, a family reading for us and talked about the importance of the waters of Dragon's Gate. Mm -hmm. And um, the Skookumchuck River, we've been given to understand that its name means healing waters or blessed waters. Um, also, this land here, um, the knoll, David Yarrow tells us, is four or 5,000 years old and is man-made to, to mark that point and assist the point of where the dragon paths cross. That this, we've learned from many people that this is a this is an ancient gathering place mm -hmm. and was for the native, the indigenous mm -hmm. native people before the white Europeans yeah. came and were a part of it. So we um, continue to listen to the land and learn from the land and how we can best assist it in its work as it's assisting us and ours. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. All right. Oh, thank you for all the work that you do here and what you're creating here. Where do you see this in the future? Right here. <laughs> but, and, and do but think that, but be, being able to um, have more people who are part of it that can, mm -hmm. you know, we're supportive and that it can blossom and grow from what it mm -hmm. already is. Mm -hmm. And that if, if it's suitable and in time, that this will be the flagship, that mm -hmm. this will be the first of other uh, oh, giant crystal that. healing mm -hmm. healing wellness centers where people can come and that they will be all over in many different places and where people can come and um, experience the sanctuary of nature and rejuvenate mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and on the practical end of things if there is a great diesel mechanic uh, that just really <laughs> wants a place to be. Come talk to us. You know? some, some farmers who are just itching for some land. Let's talk, you know. Uh, and, and so on your dream list, if you, if let's say our listeners out there, if they're feeling a call to come here and maybe be a part of your story, right? How would, what are you looking for? What would it take? Carpenters, gardeners, mm -hmm. Mechanics. Herbalists and, Herbalists. and yeah. mechanics. Mm -hmm. And that's just what we can think of at the moment. It doesn't yeah. mean that other things, other skills won't fit in. There are many potentialities here we are waiting, that are waiting for the right hands to develop, mm -hmm. if, if you will, in that way. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, currently their own, uh, you know, RV or living situation like that can make a lot be of... Helpful. Can oh, be very okay. helpful. Uh, to uh, be happy here um, and uh, just um, honesty, sincerity, you know, those mm -hmm. go a long ways. Mm -hmm. and, and, and can get a hold of your vision of your vision here, mm -hmm. of what you want to create here and continue to create, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, so. Beautiful, beautiful vision that you have and you can feel it when you walk in um you feel the love here i know mm -hmm. that's like oh yeah no but you do mm -hmm. i have to tell you you really do and you step from the third world into the fifth here i really mm -hmm. feel that we were talking about that mm -hmm. where um instead of having your koa campground oh yes <laughs> uh from my friend uh bless his soul uh wonderful fellow Doug Green and uh, 
instead of KOA, uh, what his place was, he, he thought was DOA campground, dead on arrival. Uh, and that you, you get there and you are just out. You are done. You need to be, you know, the uh, Wiley e. Coyote put the <laughs> air pump in you and pumped you back up. But uh, with by the time you leave, you're resuscitated. You're rejuvenated. Yeah. And uh, that's definitely what we, what we're hearing from people, what we see from mm -hmm. from the people camping here, and what we know from our experience with mm -hmm. it. And you have quite a few reviews uh, raving. Instead of raging, you have raving. Yes. Raving yes. reviews of uh, how you've helped change people's lives uh, on your website. Mm -hmm. And they can go to that on uh, dragonsgategardens.com. Mm -hmm. That's dragonsgategardens.com. And also on Facebook. Yes. Dragons. Or Facebook, the yeah. Tree of Life Fest.com. <clears throat> and uh, Tree of Life Festival on Facebook. Mm -hmm. In China, and, Washington. Yeah. And they have a number. Do you ever answer the phone if they call? Oh, of course. Okay, yes. yeah. what would that number be? <laughs> You're better 360 than 264 5110. <laughs> and um, make your camping reservations, right? Through Hip Camp. Through Hip Camp. Giant okay. Crystal Retreat is, if, if you look for Giant Re Crystal Retreat at Hip Camp, and then there are four actual different campgrounds that are on the property. Um, mm -hmm. But if you find that one, you'll see the other ones off to the side of it, giving you the different options. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Thank you both for yeah. being my guest oh, on the Cosmic Oracle Show today. And I want to thank you listeners for tuning in and uh, taking your time uh, to be on, on uh, the Cosmic Oracle Show and listen to what we had to say today and impart our wisdom and our love and our teachings from this beautiful inspirational couple that we have here in their glorious land and uh and it's been my pleasure my honor to bring this show to you today and um you can reach me at barbarajeanlindsay.com and i have a good friend of mine ralph rodeberg and i hope i didn't say his name wrong uh from and i hope he's there in switzerland sweden somewhere in that area he's an airplane pilot and a wonderful spiritual teacher and healer a good friend of mine will be on the show next week, and uh, I think you'll love what he has uh, to say and what he's discovered in his life's journey. We all have these amazing journeys, and it's always beautiful to hook up with other people so you don't feel that weird, you know. And and you know, and I I think we are the new weird order. I kind of like that. I'm kinda oh, I hope so. I'm kind of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm kind I of signed so. up for that, you know, and and we are a, a power to be reckoned with, too, you know, yeah. so we bring a lot to the table. So, uh, yeah, thanks for coming in and chatting and um, support my work. So how about a joke to go out with? Oh, a joke to go out with would be great. Want to hear a COVID joke? Yes, we You do. probably won't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. That Thank was you. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next week. And support my work. Buy my book, Dying for the Light. And um, and have a great week. Take off your shoes. Go hit some nature. Uh, and uh, check out their website. And you'll thank me for it later. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you again, Patrick, for saving me last week. I really appreciate that. Patrick English, my producer from last week. I want to say a, a thank you again to Marco uh, for uh, being in the chat and <coughs> monitoring chat this evening. Appreciate that. And uh, everyone else, I guess. And I do miss my Mary Margaret. Um, for those that uh, um, she ha has passed, and so she'll be with us mm -hmm. in spirit uh, on every show for probably the rest of my life. So. For those that asked me where, why wasn't she on the last week's show, um, she has passed and she had a good two years as uh, Barbara Jean's princess. And it was my honor and pleasure to be with such an amazing little being that she was, full of happiness and life and sparks. So she's still with me and I carry her uh, in my heart every day. So who are you with your animals? Give them love and care and attention and 
they always give back more than you ever give. So good night, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. And um, again, on Revolution Radio, uh, go ahead and hit that donate button because I forgot to mention that. Uh, go to freedomslips.com. That's freedomslips.com. You'll find a donate button and give whatever you can, $5, $10, $20, to keep us on the air, to keep everything going. And uh, for all of our other producers, as well as over 80 shows 24-7, uh, we really uh, do need uh, your donations, and they help it all keep running and going here. And so I thought maybe we might end the show with, what is this on the table there? Is that like a song? Oh, that's... that's um... <coughs> Little green and shade. Well, could you guys maybe end on with a song? I just want to suggest that people take their um, inner child out for a play date. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we'll try. Saturdays, holidays, easy afternoon, lazy days, summer days. Nothing much to do. Rainy days are better days for hanging out inside. Rainy days and city ways make me want to hide someplace cool and green and shady. Find yourself a piece of grassy ground, lay down, close your eyes. Find yourself and maybe lose yourself while your free spirit flies. August skies, lullabies, Promises to keep dandelions lines and twisting lines Clover at your feet Memories of aspen leaves Trembling on the wind Honeybees and fantasies where to start again someplace cool and green and shady cool and green and shady cool and green and shady Come join us. Yes, come join us at Dragon's Gate. Thank you, everyone. And blessings. we'll call that a wrap. Blessings, blessings to each and every one of you. I love you all. See you next week. Perfect timing. Goodbye, everybody. Love you all.